Welcome to GrishaCast, episode 38. In this episode, we are covering chapters 7 through 9 from the book Crooked Kingdom. This is your host, Eric. And I'm Terry from Nashville, Tennessee. This is your podcast for all things Grishaverse. A world created by the wonderful Lee Bardugo. Moi Savienyi, casters. Hello, hello. It is us. How are you all doing out there? Hopefully good. I know you can't respond, but <laughs> let's thank some listener cities. Let's do it. We have Cremorne, Australia. Wow. And we've got Bilmora, India. That's exciting. That ve- it is. <laughs> and Derby, Connecticut. What? What? That is awesome. Thank you guys so much. And um, we actually have charted on, uh-huh. so, like, it's crazy. That means... <laughs> The only people to thank is you guys. So 100%. Thank you so much. Um, we're going to just name off a few of them because, not to brag, but we've, we're in a couple places. So we're just going to name off four. So what are the first two, girl? On um, U.S. fiction, we are number 63. That is incredible. <laughs> Isn't it? <laughs> wow. And in global fiction... We're only five points behind. On, we're number 68. Wow. And then in Apple Arts, we are 236. And then in Apple Books, 68. That is great. It's just, you know, I absolutely, like, understand now, like, the feeling. It, it's just an honor to be nominated. Exactly. Because <laughs> I to just t- be on the chart at all. <laughs> exactly. And I would have never thought. Like, seriously. And we're not, like, in the thousands. Like, there are thousands of podcasts. Exactly. And we're not in the thousands. So. We're in the top 100. Thank you all so much. Uh, We love you guys so much. (laughs) And we love that you love what we're doing. We love doing this. And that's what just makes it so fun. Yes. So. Thank you guys so much. Yeah. You deserve an award. You do. We give. From us to you. Exactly. We are giving it to you guys because we wouldn't be there without you. So we also have another really awesome thing to introduce. We've got the, like, if you guys have the Etsy app or if you have ever bought something on Etsy, they've got some really cool shops. And there is this awesome shop called The World of Fandom. And... Um, those are what I bought and since then she's added more to her store so please go it's a special promotion only for you all listeners and um, it applies to the whole store that she has and she's got more on there and it's just it's awesome so I really liked her stuff and was amazed by it and it's just cool so go to Etsy, the world of fandom, 15% off and use the code GrishaCast. We have a code. Affiliate code, y'all. That's amazing. (laughs) And she asked also real quickly, she does kind of like, she sells stuff really quickly. So she kind of runs out of things, but that doesn't mean you can't get it. So if there's something that we mentioned and you don't see it, all she asks is you just message her and she will help you get what you are looking for. So Anyways, that... and they are super cute in person. They are. I love the bookmarks. Love, love, love the bookmarks. So, anyways, yeah. So that's all our little like messages in the beginning. How are you, girl? I'm 
good. Yeah. <laughs> yes, very busy. Um, Got it. My very fast five week. It's like a semester within five weeks class started. Oh. Um, so you know, term paper and quizzes and exams and everything in a very short span of time, and then the kids' school starting in a couple weeks. Yep. Uh, so with all the supplies and all the stuff what to do with that, and the website to put them in is like insane. Oh my god! With all I the forgot. questions, it is near impossible to get this stuff done. Um. So now you're gonna have to go to the school and turn stuff in. <laughs> you just reminded me that I have to go shopping for my child. I forgot completely about School supplies. supplies. Yep. Oh my god. Yep. Fun times, y'all. Although, like, school supply shopping used to be fun. I used to love it so much because I love stationery. I love pins. <laughs> and I mean, shocker. We talk about Happy Planner all the time. So we do. I love shopping for pins and mm -hmm. um, like midliners were on sale, so I had to buy those. Um, but now that you know the the state that the world is in right now it's not a lot of fun to go shopping yeah so it's not going to be very fun to go school supply shopping this year no it won't no. be no and then knowing you have to sanitize everything when oh, it's just too much yeah it's... and then with our big news also coming in about um i totally got too excited with uh, the interview coming up we've got a there's lot research on that too so yeah there's a lot going on <laughs> we have a lot going on in a very short period of time yes. but we will get through it because we are not stuck in the house board no and this is what we've worked for like i can't believe that we actually get to interview lee we're charting and we're gonna have the author on all this stuff happening at one time yes. and the world is crazy and we are really busy but uh -huh. we will do this because yeah, there, I need to be distracted during this heat wave <laughs> because oh, I so hate it. Oh, my God. My poor mom and dad, their air went out for the second time this month. They um, It went out yesterday, and it doesn't get fixed until tomorrow in between 1 and 5. And it's, I, so, it's way too hot for that. I know. It is way too hot for that. I felt so bad for them. I offered them to come over here, but... My mom, she's just like, nope, I got to work, so. Yeah, and they probably have all their comforts where they need them and want them. Exactly, they do. Because when you get to be a certain age, you know. You need all your stuff. You do. Kind of like, <laughs> I need all my stuff. I mean. I know we're getting there, too. <laughs> well, just to, like, walk from my house to our studio, you should, listeners, you should see how much <laughs> stuff I carry um, just from across my house, the driveway. just across the driveway. <laughs> I mean, I fully have my backpack on, full of my stuff, and holding a. I just, I'm one of those people that I just have to have all my stuff yes. near me. Yeah, it drives my husband crazy. <laughs> but, anyways, we have a lot to cover tonight. So yeah. let's go ahead and like let's just dive on in. Yeah, stuff is going down. Yes. So. You start us off, right? I do. Okay, uh, girl. So what are we doing? We're in chapter seven, okay. and this follows Inej. Mm -hmm. If you remember, um, she almost got her legs beaten to a pulp. Yeah. And then she was like, no, stop. Kaz won't come if I'm destroyed, or you won't be able to mess with Kaz or deal with Kaz if I'm true. If I messed up. So they throw her back in her, her little cell. <laughs> and she um, she wakes up, and she realizes that she's hungry so it must be morning. Remember, she's blindfolded and everything. Right. Um, and no one's bringing her food in the morning, unfortunately. She goes to the vent, and the vent has been completely bolted shut. Big surprise. Oops. Yeah. <laughs> she realizes that she needs to make a plan, and she decides that she'll talk. She'll spill the tea. The will hot she? tea. Will it be the real tea? It will not. It will oh, not be the real tea. It's the fake tea. The fake tea. Because there are enough secret places that aren't being used. And also some places that are used by other gangs that she knows of. So she's just going to spill all that tea. And she knows that she can have enough to say without actually giving them away for real. Okay, so it's fake tea. So it's, it is. it's like diet <laughs> like green tea or something. It's like Diet Lipton. Or uncaffeinated green tea. I Ooh, mean, uh, yes, decaffeinated Lipton is what it is. Ugh, rough. <laughs> that is rough tea that Van Eck's going to get. Yes, it really is. 
Um, she knows that she's not an actress, though, so she's got to have some sort of truth, um, which is probably a good quality to have. Right. And, and it will also take Van Eck a long time to like get through all the places that she can name. Yeah. So she's got her plan. Okay. And Bijan finally shows up. Bijan. Well, come on, Dijon. Yes, Dijon. <laughs> Come on, Grey Poupon. He removes the blindfold. <laughs> He's spicy. He uh, is. <laughs> and fancy. Fancy, spicy. Okay. Oh, I love those commercials. <laughs> Where they're like out of the limo. Yes. Yeah. I mean, because, come on, if you're, be you're fancy, you, you use Grey Poupon. I mean, it's French, so of course it's fancy. It's actually and really then the, tasty. our French listeners just shake their heads. At yeah, us. they hate <laughs> us. My God! And then, Lord, Americans think that anything French is the fanciest stuff ever. I'm well, sure you know this by now. I know. Um, so Bijan, <laughs> Dijon actually has six armed guards with him this time, and he's looking worried. Hey. They take her to the stage again. If you remember, that's where they tied her up and it was about to beat her um and i didn't really put too much in here about that but like the way that they described this theater was really cool with yeah, the, it was. the dusty curtains and um i don't know it just it's just kind of a cool scene that i would love to see on the screen at some point absolutely um but she also says it's like a surgeon's table because the lights are just focused right on and she can't really see out which is exactly what it's like on the on stage, stage. <laughs> exactly yeah you can't actually see the audience nope um she vows to herself that even if they beat the ever-loving S out of her, where she can't walk, she will repay him. Okay. That's in her mind this whole time. Van Eck gives his word that if the information she gives is good, he'll not hurt her. So she starts talking. Blue Paradise, an apartment on Kallstraat, a shopping or a shipping container. But then he stops her. And this is our first scene. Ooh. Where scene. she's given that gross lipped in tea and he's like all right hold on and y'all you have a treat tonight because we actually got three scenes for y'all yeah i hope you like them. <laughs> well we've gotten comments that people yes. love the scene yes so even when i stumble over my words <laughs> but um that just makes it more fun so who are we playing eric is jan venek hello and i terry m in his okay well let's do this let's do it so curtain oh real quickly Please enjoy also the music in the background, Summoner's Way by Ali Dodd. Ali Ali. Curtain up. Do you know something, Miss Gaffa? Venek stepped closer to her. There was no anger on his face. He looked almost gleeful. I don't think any of these places are real leads. I wouldn't. I think you intend to send me off chasing my tail while you wait for rescue or plan some other misbegotten escape attempt. But Miss Gaffa, you needn't wait. Mr. Brecker is on his way to rescue this very minute. He gestured to one of the guards. Raise the curtain. Inej heard the creak of ropes and slowly... The ragged curtains rose. The theater was packed with guards lining the aisles, 30 at least, maybe more, all heavily armed with rifles and cudgels, an overwhelming display of force. No, she thought, as Van Eck's word sank in. That's right, Miss Gaffa, said Van Eck. Your hero is coming. Mr. Brecker likes to believe that he's the smartest person in Ke Ketterdam, so I thought I'd indulge him and let him outsmart himself. I realized that instead of hiding you, I should simply let you be found. Inesh frowned. It couldn't be. It couldn't be. Had this merch actually outwitted Kaz? Had he used her to do it? I've been sending Bajan back and forth from El Comedy every day. I thought a Suli boy would be most conspicuous and any traffic to a supposedly deserted island was bound to be remarked upon. Until tonight, I wasn't sure Brecker would bite. I was growing most anxious, but he did. Earlier this evening, two of his team were spotted on the docks preparing a gondola to launch, that big Fjordan and the Zemini boy. I did not have them intercepted. Much like you, they are mere pawns. Kuwe is the prize, and your Mr. Brecker is finally going to give me what I am owed. If you treated us fairly, if you treated fairly with us, you'd have Kuwe already, she said. We risked our lives to get him out of the ice court. 
We risked everything. You should have honored your word. A patriot would have offered to free Kue without the promise of reward. A patriot? Your scheme for Jirda Param will bring chaos to Kerch. Markets are resilient. Kerch will endure. It may even be strengthened by the changes to come. But you and your ill may not fare so well. How do you think the parasites of the bear will manage when we are at war, when honest men have no coin to squander and put their minds to toil instead of vice? Inej felt her lip curl. Canal rats have a way of surviving, no matter how hard you try to stamp us out. He smiled. Most of his friends won't survive this night. End scene. Well. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, I, I like that because the whole, like, if you had treated us fairly, like if. Absolutely. If, if it had gone to plan where he would have just given the money like he said it was going to, then like we wouldn't even be in the situation. Exactly. And, and he doesn't think that way. Like, he's like, no, you should have just given Kuwait over, like, Patriot. That's insane. That's really dumb. You asked someone to do this, like, insane job. They even said the deal is the deal. Exactly. And so, that means the deal is the deal. So this is on him. And he thinks, like, I just can't believe that he doesn't understand that, like, he he did, like, that's horrible what he did. Like, I yeah. mean, absolutely, like, uh, it's just frustrating. Fair it enough. is frustrating. <laughs> they don't, under they, he doesn't get it. Sorry. I feel misunderstood. <laughs> And right, <laughs> right after um, that exchange, there's like suddenly a bunch of like shouts outside, and Vanek gets all happy, and he's uh, he's like, "Yeah, Kaz is here mm -hmm. at midnight on the dot." Remember the plan? Kaz said midnight. Right. Inej is understandably scared because she knows that her friends are about to walk into a trap, uh -oh. and now I have a little quote mm -hmm. from the book. <laughs> <laughs> from the book. From the book. <laughs> He'll never tell you where Kue is. Venek's smile was indulgent. I only wonder which will prove more effective, torturing Mr. Brecker on having him watch as I torture, or having him watch as I torture you. He leaned in, his voice conspiratorial. I can tell oh. you the first thing I'm going to do is peel off those gloves and break every one of his th th thieving, thieving mm. fingers. Inej thought of Kaz's pale trickster hands and shiny rope of scar tissue that ran atop his right knuckle. Van Eck could break every finger and both of Kaz's legs, and he'd never say a word. But if his men stripped away Kaz's gloves, Inej still didn't understand why he needed them or why he'd fainted in the prison wagon on the way to the ice court. But she knew Kaz couldn't bear the touch of skin on skin. How much of this weakness could he hide? How quickly would Van Eck locate his vulnerability, exploit it? How long until Kaz came undone? She couldn't bear it. She was glad she didn't know where Kuwe was. She would break before Kaz did. Wow. End quote. So she does not know at all where Kuwe is. Yeah. So, uh, and that's good. Again, like she said, it's good that she doesn't. Absolutely. And she still doesn't know why Kaz is the way that he is. Yeah. But that's. Also how she feels about him, that she mm. wouldn't be able to watch that. So the door, like, flies open, and this little boy comes in, and he, Hello. like, nervously tells Vanek, um, an hour mm -hmm. ago, these people approached from the water <laughs> to the lake house and, like, totally took your pregnant wife, <laughs> Alice. Excuse me. Yeah. Sorry. Excuse me. He also has a note that they left. It says, noon tomorrow. Goadmed Bridge? Yes. That's a hard word. You did word. it, girl, but you got it. With her knives. Obviously, Inej's knives. Absolutely. And it was also weighted with a ruby tie pin that Kaz stole when he had been hired for the ice court. So it was a nice little middle finger. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so funny, those little things. Inej starts laughing, just, you know, like I did, and slams her head into his nose, break, like <laughs> shattering it. He calls her names. And she responds, go on, Vanek, threaten me. Tell me all the little things I am. You lay a finger on me and Kazbrecker will cut the baby from your pretty wife's stomach and hang it from a balcony at the exchange. Don't That's doubt it. That's quite a scene to imagine. Do we think Kaz could really do that? I don't know. I absolutely think he could. But she's obviously decided that she's just not scared anymore and she's just not going to take it. Well, it's probably she needed that little, like, lifting up and, like, connection to like them you know i mean just having the like 
notion and note knowing that they're coming for her. And she knows a little bit of the plan now because they took the pregnant wife, so at least she knows. Yeah. And the chapter ends with Van Eck very upset, obviously, and Inej makes a good point that he thinks of them as canal rats and whores, so really they're just going to live up to his expectation. Oh, how sweet. Thanks for the compliment. (laughs) Well, that leads us into chapter eight. Hold on to your seats, kids. This is a lot. The yes. Chapter 8 is pretty long, and we are following around Matthias. So, anyways, I'm going to try to get through this. And we open with Matthias wishing that Alice Van Eck would shut up, and then we kind of go on the journey of how, how did these two get together? The siege at the lake house went well. They actually figured out that Inej was on the island of El Comedy, Nina wants to go get her right away, but Kaz is hesitant, and Kaz says, quote, Exactly. Van Eck's making it too easy. He's treating us like marks, but he isn't barrel-born, and we aren't a bunch of dumb coals ready to jump at the first shiny lure he flashes. Van Eck wants us to think she's on that island. Maybe she is, but he'll have plenty of firepower waiting for us, too. Maybe even a few Grisha using Parem, end quote. Also, I do have a lot of quotes in like my <laughs> notes. I've um, there's just a lot of good points. Anyways, moving on. So Kaz explains that Van Eck gave away that he has a lot to lose, and he offered it up to them pretty quickly. Not only did he tell them what to steal, but where to find it. Instead of going and kidnapping or, or getting a Nej back, they would kidnap his pre- pregnant wife Alice and trade her for a Nej. It's a lot way, easier. <laughs> it is. And I love the way that they spell Alice, A-L-Y-S. Uh-huh. And in this chapter, I'm sorry, but Alice is like, she's a small role, but she is one of my favorite characters. Like, because <laughs> she's ma- she makes me laugh so much. I don't, like, identify with her, but she really cracked me up this entire chapter. Um, you'll, you'll hear. So we keep reading about how the specific plans to the lake house heist went. And Matthias was a little butthurt that Jesper and Nina got paired together. Um, during the job and it was just a really easy break-in so much it didn't feel like they really broke in the next part is really funny to me and um, as I said I just love Alice so here's this quote they'd stopped outside the music room where Alice was perched precariously on the bench of a piano piano forte though they had expected to find her asleep she was laboring her way through some piece of music saints what is that noise Nina had whispered I think it's be still, little bumblebee, said Wylan, from behind the mask and horns of his gray imp ensemble. But it's hard to tell. When they'd entered the music room, the silky-haired terrier at her feet had the sense to growl, but poor, pretty, pregnant Alice had just looked up from her sheet of music and said, Is this a play? Yes, love, (laughs) said Jesper gently, and you're the star. They tucked her into a warm coat, then shepherder, shepherder... her out of the house and into the waiting boat she'd been so docile that nina had become concerned maybe she's not getting enough blood to her brain she'd murmured to matthias but halfway back to the city when nina had bound alice's hands and tied a blindfold over her eyes securing it tightly to the neat braids coiled atop her head the reality of her situation must have started to sink in she begun she begun to sniffle, wiping her runny nose on her velvet sleeve. The sniffling became a kind of wobbly deep breathing, and by the time they'd gotten Alice settled comfortably at the tomb and even found a little cushion for her feet, she'd let out a long wail. I want to go home, she cried. I want my dog. From then on, the crying hadn't stopped. Kaz had eventually thrown his hands up in frustration, and they'd all stepped outside the tomb to try to find some quiet, end quote. So I just think it's so funny that Alice, like, I mean, doesn't give them any trouble when they're, like, kidnapping her. Just kind of like this docile person, and they notice that they're like, what is wrong with her? But anyways. And then she pulls out the spoiled little rich girl yeah attitude <laughs> she yeah she doesn't want her husband or anybody she wants her dog yep. and she just wants to go home mm-hmm. so anyways while while they go um to get some peace and quiet they discuss that there is a lot more steps that they have that have to happen before they meet van Eck on the bridge tomorrow night for the trade 
Wyland makes a comment about what he thinks Inej would want to do as they discuss trying to shut up Alice, and Kaz kind of loses it for a minute, and I thought he was going to kill Wyland, but he doesn't. He just kind of puts him in his place and telling him he better mind his own bunk business and leave them with the job of getting Alice to calm down. So Mind your bunk biscuit. Uh-huh, bunk biscuit. So he leaves, Kaz leaves, and now got another little funny part. Quote, Nina sat down next to Alice. Would you um like some tea? With honey, Alice asked. <laughs> I, uh, I think we have sugar. I only like tea with honey and lemon. <laughs> Nina looked like she might tell Alice exactly where she could put her honey and lemon. End quote. So <laughs> she's just, Alice is cracking me up. They distract Alice with uh, questions about Wylan at first, which is sweet because all she has is compliments for her stepson. But it gets her reminded of her puppy Rufus, and she starts <laughs> blubbering again. <laughs> Matthias tries a different angle and starts honing in on, like, the needs of a pregnant woman. So he puts a cold compress on her head and is going to massage her feet. Matthias is very sweet here. Quote, Matthias slid off Alice's shoe and said, You haven't been kidnapped. You're just being held for a brief time. By tomorrow afternoon, you'll be home with your dog and your birds. You know that no one is going to hurt you, yes? I'm not sure. Well, you can't see me, but I'm the biggest person here, and I promise that no one will hurt you, end quote. So we know, like, Matthias is lighten lightening up and being, like, kind of like this, like, sweetheart and um, trying to calm her down and just tell her, look, we're just using you as a pawn for a minute. You're going to be fine. We're not going to hurt you. Yeah, didn't it remind him of his mother? Yeah, because he remembered, like, when she was pregnant and how... how she was uncomfortable and it would have to walk around. Yeah, and, she walked yeah. around, like... I think she, like, walked out to her town or something and noticed she was wearing, like, the opposite shoes. Alice is a little bit more docile and a little bit crazier <laughs> right now, but I almost think it has nothing to do with her pregnancy either. I think it's just oh, Alice she, being insane. Yeah, she's a spoiled little rich girl. Yeah. So Matthias asks what she think, um, what she likes to do to help calm her down and help her get de-stressed, and they go over kind of like the short list, <laughs> and then she recommends that she loves singing. Here we go, kids. <laughs> Quote, maybe we save that for later, suggested Jesper. <laughs> Alice's lower lip began to wobble like a plate about to break. Sing, Matthias blurted, by all means sing. And then the real nightmare began. It wasn't that Alice was so bad. She just never stopped. She sang between bites of food. She sang while she was walking through the graves. She sang while behind a bush when she needed to relieve herself. When she finally dozed off, she hummed in her sleep. Maybe this was Van Eck's plan all along, Kaz said glumly when they'd assembled outside the tomb again. To drive us mad, said Nina, it's working. Jesper shut his eyes and groaned, diabolical, end quote. Kaz then tells Nina and Matthias that they should probably get going, and it's not their time to get in position for the next part of the plan. Kaz tells them that they need to grab the masks and capes, find a place that like he mentions has like a golden badger, that's what you're looking for, and start handing out something, he's not specific here, only when you get close to the lid and start heading south. So we really don't know what's going on, but he's th throwing out these little like hints. They obviously do. He goes over all the crow's positions, and they all will be in different viewing points where they will all be able to see Van Eck every moment he is visible at this trade the next day. They all depart, but as Nina heads toward the rowboat, Matthias kind of grabs Jesper and asks him about what happened at the lake house because they were paired together. Jesper doesn't tell him, but he does give him like a little bit like he says, you know, you need to be careful. She's not her normal self and that she might need backup, but doesn't explain why. So we know why we do. Kind Like something weird is just going on with she Nina. She made things happen that. If you guys remember from last time, she right. made things happen that she shouldn't have been able to do. Right. But, like, one thing that I think is really important is, like, we've got to remem remember, Jurda Parem is, like, so addictive. She's probably the first and only Grisha to have ever not gone and gotten right. more yeah. and actually made it through. Because all the other Grisha just, like, automatically are addicted and get more. So this is just some kind of weird effect that happens afterwards. And we don't need to worry Matthias anymore. <laughs> no, we don't. Than he already is. 
So Matthias and Nina then get in the rowboat, and Matthias starts to think about when he made the right decision to give the parem to Kaz. He remembers the night she woke him up trying to get it. And this next quote is <laughs> important, it. but it's for my peeps out there that have read all of Crooked Kingdom. You'll know why. This is just kind of interesting. She'd woken him from the dream that had been plaguing him since the ice court. One moment he had been wandering in the cold, blind from the snow, wolves howling howling in the distance, and then the next he'd been awake. So Matthias is having these like dreams over and over again about just being in sounds like Fjorda or like the snow and just hearing wolves and just interesting. So as they start to float down the canal, Matthias thinks about how the Druskella was a corrupt cause and that he's different now. He sees a man and his wife enjoy, enjoying their privacy in their home together, and kind of he gets a little envious that him and Nina can't have that because they're soldiers. We definitely see that they are having more of a, a relationship here than they did in Six of Crows. They're, right. Like, yeah. So they're more of a team than they were. Absolutely. So that's going to bring us to our second scene for the evening where I will be playing Matthias and Terry will be playing Nina. And our third scene is actually like almost like directly <laughs> afterward, but they're really great scenes. So have fun, folks, and enjoy our scene. So curtain up. He knew he asked Nina too often, but as they disembarked near East Dave, Matthias couldn't stop himself from saying, How do you feel? Quite well, she said dismissively, adjusting her veil. She was dressed in the glittering blue finery of the Lost Bride, the same costume she'd been wearing the night she and the other members of the dregs had appeared in a cell. Tell me, Druskella, have you ever actually been to this part of the barrel? I didn't have much opportunity for sightseeing while I was in Hellgate, Matthias said, and I wouldn't have come here anyway. Of course not. This many people having fun in one place might have shocked the Fjordan right out of you. Nina, Matthias said quietly as they made their way to the furrier. He didn't want to push, but he needed to know. When we went after Smeet, you used a wig and cosmetics. Why didn't you tailor yourself? She shrugged. It was easier and faster. Matthias was silent, unsure of whether to press her further. They passed a cheese shop, and Nina sighed. How can I walk by a window full of wheels of cheese and feel nothing? I don't even know myself anymore. She paused and said, I tried to tailor myself. Something feels off, different. I only managed the circles under my eyes, and it took every bit of my focus. But you were never a gifted tailor. Manners, Fearden. Nina... This was different. It wasn't just challenging. It was painful. It's hard to explain. What about compelling behaviors, Matthias asked, the way you did at the ice court when you used the parm? I don't think it's possible anymore. Have you tried? Not exactly. Try it on me. Matthias, we have work to do. Try it. I'm not going to go rattling around in your head when we don't know what might happen. Nina. Nina, she said in exasperation. Come here. They had nearly reached East Dave, and the crowds of revelers had grown thicker. Nina pulled him into the alley between two buildings. She lifted his mask and her own veil. Then slowly, she placed a hand on either side of his face. Her fingers slid into his hair, and Matthias's focus shattered. It felt like she was touching him everywhere. She looked into his eyes. Well? I don't feel anything, he said. His voice sounded embarrassingly hoarse. She arched a brow. Nothing? What did you try to make me do? I'm trying to compel you to kiss me. That's foolish. Why is that? Because I always want to kiss you, he admitted. Then how come you never do? Nina, you just went through a terrible ordeal. I did. That's true. You know what would help? A lot of kissing. We haven't been alone since we were aboard the Farallon. You mean when you almost died, said Matthias? Someone had to remember the gravity of the situation. I prefer to think of the good times, like when you held my hair as I was vomiting into a bucket. Stop trying to make me laugh. But I like your laugh. Nina, this is not the time to flirt. I need to catch you off your guard. Otherwise, you're too busy protecting me and asking me if I'm okay. Is it wrong to worry? No, it's wrong to treat me like I might break apart at any moment. I'm not that fine or that fragile. 
she shoved his mask down, none too gently, yanked her veil back in place, and strode past him out of the alley, across the street to a shop with a golden badger over the door. End scene. So, um, I really only got like two notes in between these. <laughs> so, they go into the shop and they pick up a uh, order for someone named Judith Conan, and they take that wrapped parcel and leave. And in this, the badger store. Yeah. <laughs> and this next scene is just kind of like, it's just fun. So, I hope you guys enjoy it. We're playing the same people. I'm playing Matthias, and Terry's playing Nina. So, um, here we go. Last and final scene. <laughs> Curtain up. I really enjoy that guy's enthusiasm. He's great. <laughs> Once Matthias found a large enough red cloak and placed the red and white lacquered mask over his face, Nina handed him a bag of silver coins. Matthias bounced the bag once in his palm, and the coins gave a cheerful jingle. They aren't real, are they? Of course not, but no one ever knows if the coins are real. That's part of the fun. Let's practice. Practice? Mother, father, pay the rent, Nina said in a sing-song voice. Matthias stared at her. Is it possible you're running a fever? Nina shoved her veil up onto her head so he could experience the full force of her glare. It's from the comedy Brute. When Mr. Crimson comes on stage, the audience shouts, Mother, father, pay the rent. Matthias it, finished. Exactly. Uh, then you say, I can't, my dear, the money spent. And then you toss a handful of coins into the crowd. Why? The same reason everyone hisses at the madman and throws flowers at the scarab queen. It's tradition. Tourists don't always get it, but the Kurtz do. So tonight, if someone yells, Mother, father, pay the rent. I can't, my dear. I can't, my dear. The money spent. Matthias in tone, gl gloomily, casting a handful of coins into the air. You have to do it with more enthusiasm, Nina urged. It's supposed to be fun. I feel foolish. It's good to feel foolish sometimes, Fjordan. You only say that because you have no shame. To his surprise, instead of offering a sharp retort, she was silent and rema remained that way until they took up their first position in front of the gambling parlor on the lid, joining the musicians and buskers only a few doors down from Club C Cumulus. Then it was as if someone had flipped a switch in Nina. Come one, come all, to the Crimson Cutlass, she mm -hmm. declared. You there, sir. You are too skinny for your own good. Ooh. What would you think of a little free food and a flagon of wine? Ooh. And you, miss. Huh. Now, you look like you know how to have a little bit of fun. Girl. Nina lured Doris to them one by one as if she'd been born to it, offering free food and drink and handing out costumes and flyers. When one of the bouncers from the gambling parlor emerged to see what they were up to they moved along heading south and west continuing to give away the 200 costumes and masks kaz had procured when people asked what it was all about nina claimed it was a promotion for a new gambling hall called the crimson cutlass end scene see that was fun it was fun we got to even sing a little we did although i probably should have sung really really badly because we know nina can't sing Oh, but it was fun. So probably should have like tried Mother, to do it all key. <laughs> hey, it was fun. I had to have that in there because like we got to like do some like, you know, we're getting better at this acting, by the way, girl. You and I are just bringing it to these scenes. <laughs> yeah, we are. We're charting now and just wait. Emmys are on the way, honey. They yes. are. I don't know what the what oh, the reward it or the award is for podcast, you know. We're going to get webby? it, whatever it is. I think it's a webby. Is it a webby? There's a webby. And then we maybe we'll be up for a queer tea sometime. <gasps> That's like the queer like yes. podcast something. Or anyways, so let's keep on moving. I told <laughs> you I've got this going. I got a lot. They make it to the hotel where Nina's spot is in the room facing the Gold Med Bridge. Matthias walks her to her room and she gives Matthias a little attitude. Matthias then goes to his mark under the bridge where he meets Wylan. Everyone is in position. Quote. Matthias settled his back against the ledge and shut his eyes, floating in and out of consciousness. He was used 
to these long stretches with little sleep from his time with the Druskella. He would wake when he needed to, but now he marched across the ice, the wind howling in his ears. Even the Robkins had a name for that wind. Grusenburia, the brute, a killing wind. It came from the north, a storm that engulfed everything in its path. Soldiers died mere steps from their tents, lost in the whiteness, their cries for help eaten by the faceless cold. Nina was out there. He knew it, and he had no way to reach her. He screamed her name again and again, feeling his feet going numb in his boots, the ice seeping through his clothing. He strained to hear an answer, but his ears were full of the roar of the storm, and somewhere in the distance, the howl of wolves. She would die on the ice. She would die alone, and it would be his fault. End quote. So he's obviously fallen back asleep. Yeah, And he's having clearly. that same nightmare again. He always has really vivid dreams. Yeah. And um, this is where we found out, like, the title of this part, The Killing Wind. So that was, I don't know. I realized that. Yep. Anyways. <laughs> so Wylan wakes Matthias up from this wonderful dream he's having. And Matthias um, then runs down the stairs. He uses his mirror. He's got a little mirror. And he uses it to signal to Nina and Jesper in their positions. Just before noon, Matthias sees Kaz coming from the west. Quote, the crowd seemed to part around him, perhaps sensing the purpose that drove him. It reminded Matthias of villagers making signs in the air to ward off evil spirits. Alice Van Eck waddled along beside him. Her blindfold had been removed, and though his long glass, Matthias could see her lips moving. Sweet gel, is she still singing? Judging from the sour expression on Kaz's face, it was a distinct possibility. End quote. Matthias sees Van Eck on the other side of the bridge, and he is surrounded by guards, but also a tiny hooded figure with him. A neige! Yay! Yay! And here is the last part of this chapter, as I, I'm just going to read it out. Both parties reached the bridge. Kaz and Alice walked forward. Van Eck signaled the guards holding a neige. Matthias looked up. From the other rooftop, Jesper's mirror was flashing frantically. Matthias scanned the area around the bridge, but he couldn't see what had gotten Jesper so panicked. He peered through the long glass, training it on the labyrinthine streets that flowed outward from both sides of the stave. Kaz's retreat appeared clear, but when Matthias looked past Van Eck to the east, his heart filled with dread. The streets were dotted with clusters of purple, all of them moving toward the stave. Stodwatch. Was it just a coincidence or something Van Eck had planned? Surely he wouldn't want to risk city officials finding out what he'd been up to. Could the Furidans be involved? What if they were coming to arrest both Van Eck and Kaz? Matthias flashed his mirror twice at Nina. From her lower vantage point, she wouldn't see the Stodwatch until it was too late. Again, he felt the cold lash of the wind, heard his voice calling her name, but his terror rise as no answer came. She'll be fine, he told himself. She's a warrior. But Jesper's warning ran in his ears. Be careful. She'd not quite, she's not quite herself. He hoped Kaz was ready. He hoped Nina was stronger than she seemed. He hoped the plans they laid were enough, that Jesper's aim was true, that Wyland's calculations were correct. Trouble was coming for them all. Matthias reached for his rifle. End quote. End scene. Whew. <laughs> okay. I'm calling it foreshadowing for Nina doing something crazy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm just going to take a guess. Remember, I haven't read further. Right. So that's just my educated guess. Thanks for bearing with me, guys. That was a long chapter. <laughs> well, a lot was going on. And there's a lot that happens in this chapter, too. So I really tried to condense it down. It wasn't a lot of pages. Right. But a lot of things. There's a lot of action. And that's always kind of hard to. Oh, absolutely. And to explain. So, chapter nine, this is at the vantage point of Kaz. He um, sees Van Eck coming. He sees his horribly broken nose. There are also guards around him. He picks out Nina in the hood, decides at this time that he's not going to make the mistake of breaking his focus like he did right. before where he looked at her and told everybody that, you know, he liked her. Um, and But he, because he kind of wants to look closer to make sure she's okay. Uh, and obviously, that focus is to free an edge and make Van Eck pay. Mm -hmm. Van Eck and Kaz exchanged a very, like, straight man nod. Like, of course. Sup. Sup. <laughs> Sup, bro. With Kaz's hand on Alice's shoulder. Alice oddly asks if he thinks Van Eck is handsome <laughs> and says that she thinks he would be handsome if he weren't so old. 
but oh. it's the money that's important. <laughs> oh, of course. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, that was just a very strange. Like, why would you ask Kaz that? But whatever. Hmm. Uh, ben X says, they're not at the end of their deal. Kaz still needs to tell him where Kuwe is. Yeah. Kaz says, show me the money. Show me the money. Show me the money. Show me the money. Show Help me, me the Kruger. Help you. Van Eck says, wow, that's a throwback. All the young people have no idea what I'm just talking about. Van Eck says, right? he doesn't have the money. Can't show him the money. What? Mm. Mm. So, of course, Kaz is like, no deal. Not picking the suitcase. No deal. Let- <laughs> <laughs> I'm not exchanging with the banker. I- that's what it was. <laughs> Deal or no deal, y'all. Get your stuff and head out. <laughs> Sashay away. <laughs> um, so he's like, let's just exchange our women and leave. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, that's kind of what it was. <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, so Van Eck learned his lesson from previously with Wyland and Kuwait swapping or using Kuwait's face. And so he checks to make sure that Alice is really Alice by asking her, what are you naming the child? Oh. <laughs> He's satisfied with it. The exchange is made, and Inej is still looking fierce, y'all. Ooh, Kaz that. knows that Van Eck isn't going to let them go very easily. Of course not. So he asks Inej, you got your knives? Yeah, she does. Oh, yeah, she's got those <laughs> saints. So Van Eck yells out, wait, you said my wife and son. Where's Wyland? Then the stod watch up here start blocking the bridge, and Jan is feeling himself at this point. He's like, mm-hmm. I got you. Feeling those oats. He's like, let's do this for real. Kaz knows the tea, so without a word, he spins Inej around, and in one single move, he frees her from the chains, and she throws a knife into an officer. They're such a great team. They really are. Like, they didn't even have to exchange a word. They haven't even seen each other for a while, and... They know exactly what to do. Oh, love it. It's like and- you and me, girl. <laughs> I know. Except, <laughs> well, I mean, exactly. And, and less um, violent. You would definitely be Kaz. I'd, I'd probably be more of a niche. Yeah, who knows? You would definitely be Kaz. Anyway. We would probably just fall to the floor crying. Um, yeah. <laughs> as the more like Stodwatch come at them, Kaz raises his cane to signal Jesper and told Inej to go to the west side of the flower boat. She does it without questioning. There's an explosion of fireworks. Because remember, there's tourists everywhere. Um. Kaz uses like this metal cord, which at first, when I first read it, I thought he zip lined like with his cane, <laughs> like put his cane up there and like zip lined down, really cool. which in my brain looked really cool. But it's more like a Batman moment where he yeah. like swings like a pendulum. That was the word that I missed the first time. Pendulum down to the flower boat. Uh, but there's already boats heading towards them. So while the fireworks went off, Wyland blows holes in one of the Stan Watch's boats. It was like perfectly timed. The tourists had no idea what's going on. Kaz Party. throws wild geraniums everywhere <laughs> while throwing a red cape over at Nesh. So it's like this beautiful moment of flowers falling down while he's putting the cape on her. Oh, it's like Sasha Valor winning Drag oh. Race. Mm. Did you ever see that? I did. Okay. Because there's a lot of like PTSD that went into that for the other person. Oh, yes. Um, <laughs> Uh, so she's kind of getting sentimental, and she's like, those are my mom's favorite flowers. And Aww. Kaz is like, well, it's good to know Van Eck didn't cure you of sentiment, because mm-hmm. <laughs> he's really sentimental. So right. on his go, they use his cord to Batman back to the bridge, <laughs> where there is just chaos, because everyone is in the same costume. They're all in, like, the Mr. Crimson costume. Because that's what they're in. That was the plan. Yeah, that, the that's the tradition that was that's going on. So right. like, everybody's dressed up like that. And they're all shouting the mother father thing, and I can't deer, and they're throwing coins everywhere, and it's just literal chaos everywhere. The stod watch are trying to work through the crowd, pulling up people's masks, and Nesh is laughing her butt off, makes Kaz happy that she's finally like enjoying herself. Mm. But then there's just this huge boom that like shakes the ground so hard that everyone is like toppling over. There's smoke everywhere, and Kaz's ears are ringing. This woman runs by, covered in dust, holding her ears, and there's just blood pouring oh. out. And there's actually a huge hole in the front of the House of the White Rose. Oh, wow. And Nez starts to take off her mask to figure out what's going on, but Kaz runs up and, like, slaps it back down. Obviously, something is terribly wrong. Yeah. Wylan would not have made such a huge mistake. No. 
so they so Kaz thinks maybe someone else is actually there causing this damage. Mm-hmm. So he touches Inez's shoulder, and without a word, they just take off running to the nearest alley. End of chapter. Wow, that's a di- good job. I was like, Thanks. hanging on to my chair at that like <laughs> the last like ten minutes. I was like, you're just really you got me like entranced. I was like, go girl. It's hard with like the action. I know to like narrow it down, but and- you nailed it. Thanks. So. I hope you all enjoyed it as much as I just did. I was, <laughs> it was I even fun, read the chapter. It was it, a fun read, like to read through it. It was. So um, that's the end of our reading section. So that means it's that time for... Greasy Cats, Cats News! news. Yeah. So um, we don't really got a lot, <laughs> but we do want to real quickly remind you, if you have not sent in your questions uh please do soon (laughs) because we are uh, at deadline so we will stop um taking questions this upcoming monday july 26th so make sure to get those into us email them to us and um you email them to info at grishacast.com so so I you thought, can tell it's happening real soon, y'all. Exactly. <laughs> if we have to get it by Tuesday, Monday. Right. Because Monday, Monday. We've got so much work to do. But we got it, girl. It's soon. So if you want to be a part of this big moment for us, big moment for y'all, get your get your question answered by Miss Lee Bardugo, then get those questions in. And have your screen name like, yeah. spread out during the question. Exactly. So. Some way to now, don't give us some, like, long, drawn-out, like, <laughs> you know, Game of Thrones name. Just keep it simple, queen. Um, so, <laughs> keep it simple, queen. I was going to say kiss, but okay. Yeah. Uh, I thought we had, I got really excited. I think it was last night. I thought we had some, like, news, but it was not real. It was on the, like, Grishaverse site. There was this picture of, like, the actor that plays Matthias, And then it showed the logo for the Shadow and Bone TV show. And then it had, like, coming August, like, and actually had a date. And I was like, oh, my God, they've sent out a release already? (laughs) Like, I mean, we know the date that this is coming out. And then, like, everything I looked, it's like, no, that it just had to to be made up. So, anyways, that's all the Grisha Cast news we got. Um, Thank God, because we have enough going on already. (laughs) We do. So we've got a couple listener thank yous from Instagram. Like to say thank you to Everything I Say is Satire, Sunday Ray, and then also a new listener. Well, yeah, she is a new listener. Her her name is Audie B. And her and her sister, um, well, she just saw our um, post of what crow you would be. Mm-hmm. And she just sent us a message saying, like, what is this? This seems really interesting. I, like, doesn't know anything about it. So I told her, I was like, well... It's like the Grishaverse and told her where to start. And she actually responded back that her and her sister both got the book Shadow and Bone are about to start it and they're going to start listening. Look so, what we did, y'all. <laughs> so you can listen. For, you can start reading and join now. So anyways, I told her, I was like, well, make sure you keep listening because somewhere in that mix, like five books ahead, you'll you might have a <laughs> shout out. Yeah. <laughs> so and then we've got one shout out from Facebook, Georgia Burkhart. Uh, Georgia was responding to which um, crow you would be. She says she didn't have to take the quiz to know she was Wylan, and oh, she took the quiz and she got Wylan. Oh. Surprise. That is a surprise. So. That's good, though. It is. And. Um, you were right. Yeah. we've And we really have tea to figure out <laughs> about that quiz, but we're going to talk about that when we have more yeah. time. So, um, anyways, just just saying, like we um, we got some questions about how those answers work out, <laughs> y'all. Um, don't think it's too fair because after, like, seriously, I thought I was gonna totally. I didn't think I was gonna get Kaz. I was, and I'm sure you could tell, I was pissed. <laughs> but yeah, and, that's not who I would pin on you at all. And for my answers but no. anyways you heard us talk about this probably like 15 minutes last uh-huh. time so thanks for, <laughs> for listening we love you all um please don't forget to rate us on apple Podcasts. leave us a review do those are so fun to read yes and i love them so much i like them almost as much as the listener cities <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> make terry happy y'all come on we're stressed <laughs> so we need little things um so for next week 
reek. Yep, Ooh, that's how stressed reek. we are. <laughs> we are going to keep it simple for ourselves. We're only going to do ten, two. Ch- I was about to say ten chapters. We're only going to do ten chapters, y'all. Words are, We're going to be on hard. here for the next twelve hours. <laughs> yes, it's, um, a, it's a marathon. It's a marathon, Grisha <laughs> cast. I, um, Chris would die. Um, anyways, we're gonna do chapters ten and eleven. So ten short, eleven's longer, but it's gonna, it's gonna, I don't know. It's a total of thirty-one pages, so not too bad. But anyways, read that for next week. So we love you all. Peace out. See you all next week. No mourners. No funerals. This has been GrishaCast. Connect with us on the web at GrishaCast.com. Send an email to info at GrishaCast.com. Follow us on Instagram at GrishaCast, YouTube at GrishaCast, Twitter at Grisha Podcast, and Facebook at GrishaCast. Special thanks to Oliver Dodd for the use of Summoner's Way. 